tonight, disgraced mogul Sean Diddy Combs, still behind bars, held without bail, <coughs> pleading not guilty to explosive charges, sex trafficking, racketeering, and transportation to engage in prostitution. What's up, New York? A year ago, Sean Combs stood in Times Square and was handed a key to New York City. Today, he's been indicted and will face justice in the Southern District of New York. The once celebrated rapper was arrested by federal agents Monday night at the Park Hyatt Hotel in New York City. At the center of those charges, alleged freak-offs or sex performances that authorities claim were planned and recorded. A word that has come up in this story, freak-off, what is that? It is him having like sex workers or whoever come in and, and have sex with his partner, whoever it is, um, while he watches or participates or whatever. Yeah. The indictment alleges that Combs abused and exploited women and other people for years and in a variety of ways. Sean Combs entered court and when he first walked through the doors in the company of the U.S. Marshals, he didn't have any handcuffs on. He did look a little bit stunned as he surveyed the imposing federal courtroom. The only word Sean Combs uttered during the entire hearing were the words not guilty. Otherwise, he was nearly motionless, looking in large part straight ahead unless he had to directly talk to his lawyer. We're appealing the, the, the decision to hold him without bail. Combs' attorney denying all allegations and saying his client will fight the charges. Mm. So, darkness comes to light. Mm. What do y'all think about did he getting arrested? What do you think is going to happen from here, too? I mean, it's, it's just like a classic play out of uh, what we see on all trials, man. People say they're not guilty, and then all the evidence comes out, and then you're sitting there and you're like, how could you even utter those words? I mean, uh, it's all political, of course, you know, just to say it because your attorney's telling you to. Hey, you got to say you're not guilty, so you know, this goes away or we try to get off of this. But, I mean, it's crazy. I mean, look, look at how many mobsters, you know, have all gotten caught up on these charges and it, it, it catches up to him. I don't understand why he didn't think it didn't wouldn't cut up with him. But R. Kelly would have set me straight. If I was Diddy, I would have seen it's R. Kelly's late. situation, and it's I would have been like, "Let me, let me back out of this because <coughs> he was doing this stuff too recent." It's too late. If you think this is a warning to other people, it's too late. Like yeah. they, they got yeah. it. They've they been had him. You already. Man. Man. They been had him. They just letting you know now. I just would have got real quiet and gone away for a long, long time. Like I would have been like, man, up, when, the when you see a ten years, <laughs> ten years away from the light will get me. <laughs> Fez already did the research. Like I said, yeah. like he yeah. said he was already caught. Yeah. Yeah. I just feel Fez like watching. too. I don't care. It ain't necessarily a crime, but you got a thousand bottles of baby oil. You doing something? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Doing, <laughs> no good explanation. You're, for that. You're doing You're right. too That's much crazy. slipping and sliding for me. Stuff in there, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Just, yeah it was for so, some reason they. They had like male, um, male toys mm -hmm. in there, like seven hundred and fifty. Yeah, like, yeah, like seven hundred. Yeah, it's crazy. It was, and, yeah, and, there's no, there's no way to spin that. And this is what I say. This, this is how I feel about it. Like at this point, like I feel like a lot of us about to be scarred, bro, because he said in when I when I looked in the report, it said something about other artists were involved. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And yeah, I'm starting to see now, like a lot of the people that are possibly involved, kind of start to like act weird in a fashion. Mm -hmm. um, the other day, I was watching. Um, I was watching this uh I was on TikTok and I saw like Usher and he was on there and he just it was so weird. I don't know if y'all saw the video, but he uh like dancing or that it didn't look like him and he gonna talk about some yeah the way his voice kinda was high pitched and it, it just seemed kinda weird to me. And then um today on Instagram I saw Justin Bieber he was with uh he, he was kind of dressed weird or whatever i guess and they had some like some young kids over there making fun of him he got mad at him like i never seen him like this before like he was mm. like real life upset so i feel like they even know that in these hours something's about to get exposed mm. yeah man that's I've crazy bro. Yeah. that's crazy I mean, definitely there was a lot of you know I've, I've heard grumblings of a lot of people saying yeah. you know so and so this tape things are coming out Ain't and bad. I think one we know how the justice system works you're, yeah. you're innocent until proven guilty mm -hmm. I think we have the court of public opinion yeah. and a lot of people you know obviously can you know put two and two together some of these things have been spoken about for years does exactly. he pull exactly. people down with him like at the point where he, if he feels no support he just starts naming off people <laughs> with I, a video, I, with a video is it too dangerous the, for him the, to do the, that the videotapes got the people already Dang, right. The video so the, the government the government took the videotapes. So the videotapes he got he got the videotapes. The government got the videotapes of what people were doing and how mm -hmm. he was blackmailing people saying like, you know, I got this I got this video of you doing XYZ. 
you got to do what I tell you kind of vibe. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I think at the end of the day, yeah, the video's already out there. I think the government, I think the government only people, and then also, I don't know how true this is. You know, you know, you know, people were saying like they were selling some tapes on a black market oh, for wow. somebody. That's oh, wow. crazy. Yikes. I didn't hear that. I mean, the, that's the dark net is possible yeah. too. So you never know. I mean, yeah. you never know. I'm sure we'll find out. You know, darkness comes to the light. It yeah. Always does. Yeah. Y'all remember a long time ago they had this situation with um, the the Ashley Madison thing or whatever. Yeah. yeah. I never watched that documentary, <coughs> but I remember reading up at the, when it first got out that there was a pastor who ended up like killing himself because yeah. he found out it was coming. Mm -hmm. Do you think we're going to see people? Doing the crazy church? things. I, I mean, well, I, I hope the church is like far from this. I know it's not, but <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I like to be optimistic of it. But do you think we're going to see people coming out like doing crazy things? I mean, he already said. I mean, I think people are reacting to, uh oh, what are they, what's going to leak? Because the feds have it. So they already know. Yeah. What's going to leak out of the feds? Because some stuff gets leaked intentionally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, and then some stuff is accidental. So I think this just nervousness right now. Who has mm -hmm. what? Mm -hmm. Who has me? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be some weird behavior. You saw like in the last three or four days, probably like <coughs> ten CEOs of like different record labels have resigned. Yep. What? Like, oh, no, I didn't see yeah, that. Yeah, like three hundred. Um, three hundred. Um, Sony from Japan. Um, yeah. A few other people. Like a lot of C uh, record label CEOs and presidents oh. are resigning. <laughs> You already know what time I'm not. Is, <laughs> That's crazy. The live really footage, that. man. That's crazy. And that just goes back to the biblical principle that it don't matter how much you try to hide stuff, like it's going to come to light. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's going yeah. to come to light. Like yeah. it's going to. And I, I, me just saying that actually manifests itself, just actually builds my faith in a way. I'm yeah. not gonna lie to you. It's just sad that somebody could do this for 20 years. 20 years. Bro. Hurt that many people for 20 years. Turn yeah. turn victims into abusers. Because I'm, I'm assuming that's what's happening oh, too, yeah, right? Yeah, He's yeah. making people victims. Yeah. And then those victims are oh, victimizing yeah. other people. Hurt people hurt people. Yeah. This has yeah. been going on for years. But and, I, I guess the question goes back to, and I'm not, not saying him for Diddy, but I'm just saying who taught Diddy? Well, I mean, there's got to be, there's got to be the something. Andre Her they said Andre Herrera was the one that broke him, man. Yeah. Oh, really? Really? Wow. That's, that's what they say. Well, Clive I, Davis? I wasn't there. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, I mean, there's so many different things in, in, in terms of, you know, there's obviously the rumors, you know, mm -hmm. that start way before any of them, right? You know, it goes back to, you know, people speaking on Quincy Jones and different <laughs> yeah. things. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. That aspect. I, you know, the, the one thing I, will, I wanted to say specifically is that Denying bail means something. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. A lawyer here, yeah. but usually when bail is denied, it's for not. We always think of the reason the person has the capability to run. Mm -hmm. That's usually the number one reason. But in this case, you know, I'm willing to almost wager that it's keeping them alive. No, no? But there's some information that that is that is that we're not privy to that you know somebody has and they've shared and bail has been denied. Right, mm. and so that—that's what I'm willing to. Yeah, I'm willing. Yeah, to that thought takes me a lot, a lot of places. Mm -hmm. that thought. So, so what does this mean? Like, if the industry that we've all been, you know, we all grew up in, right? Yep. We grew up in yeah. Bad Boy era. We grew up in all these people's eras. What does that mean? Like, if they were the ones influencing our culture for all those years, what do we? How do we combat that? How do we well, undo <clears> some of that? Well, I think the thing is this, and I think we always talk about this. I mean, we don't even talk about, I don't think we talked about it, but this, there's been sayings about Africa Bambada when he molested kids back in the day. Wow. Mm. You know what I mean? So if that's one of the pioneers of hip hop, yeah, then this whole thing so is, is kind of like shaky. A, it's like a rite of passage that you got to... <laughs> I don't think it's a rite of passage, what? but I mean, I think it's just mm -hmm. perversion. Mm -hmm. this, I've heard. I've rite heard. of passage... The rituals, this thing, yeah. this, this industry is very dark, right? Yeah. And you have to really look at whenever you see exposure to pedophilia, yeah. whenever you see, because I, you know, I, I, I push to pedophilia more than anything because you don't see, you don't see people speaking about that. Mm -hmm. um, you see those things going away, yeah. right? Mm. And the people who are involved, it gets quiet, right? And so, when there's attention to be pushed somewhere else, um, you know, that works better, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it's the Me mm -hmm. Too movement or whatever. And I'm not discrediting any of these, 
you know, trials and, and, and evils that people are going through. Mm -hmm. But this industry, you know, music, film and TV, which I'm in now, mm -hmm. when there's it's dark. To be pushed and somewhere else. and you, mm -hmm. you, you know, you know, you know what, what, what it kind of shows me, it just kind of exposes the, the like what's really going on in the industry, like the false, how, how false it really is. Yeah. Because now we're seeing the people that we looked up to. That's why I said we're going to be scarred because the people that a lot of us looked up to, the people that making music about doing this and that, it's showing how dark their hearts are. Mm. You know, the, yeah. the thing too, I have to say is like the music that we're listening to, I don't think we, like we like I, I examined stuff even back in the day when I wasn't like walking with God and I was mm -hmm. like this doesn't sound right mm -hmm. and you go back and you hear some stuff and it's very there's this heavy rape molestation references yeah. in songs uh, even now like I listen to certain songs I've heard people and you know I'm hearing stuff when I'm out and I'm like that sounds like a rape Song. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'm trying to remember. Like there's a guy and he's like, uh, "You gonna give it up?" Mm -hmm. And the girl keeps saying, "I got a man." I can't remember how it goes. Like, you what's your man got to do with? Yeah, yeah. No, oh, is that it? No, yeah. no, no, no. It's a, it's a new song. Oh no, like, you gonna new give song. it up? He's like, uh, you know, I, you know, I got a man. And he's like, "You gonna give it up?" He just keeps saying, "I'm oh, like, wow. if you take away the song." This dude is basically like, I'm gonna get that. Yeah. And it's, you know what I mean? And it's like uh, in a way where we, people are dancing to the stuff. Like Christmas song. Like back you in go the to the yeah. club and you think about it. Like go to the club and shots get fired. And people's like, why? What were you listening to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And what spirit was happening? All this, all the killing, all the, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like smoking but, too good. Yeah. Beer. What? Just, but, but do you that think that's crazy. like, now as we go in and you've seen, I've heard, of course, we we talked about Lester Crawley on our show before, but mm -hmm. him in one of his books, he was a known Satanist, body, the, the big dog of Satanism. Uh, one of his books was called Sex Magic, where he talked about having sex with kids, the way you orgies and all like that, invoking demonic presence in those things. And as I think about the industry, that's what it feels like, like that that thing, because a lot of and a lot of people, but a lot of people follow that. Like mm -hmm. that that form of Satanism, you know what I'm saying? So I I think that's one of those things where people probably gotta. That's why all this stuff is starting to happen. You know, yeah. what I mean, Satan know his time is up. Yeah, I think for for me, I, I don't know, I can't speak on Sean's behalf either. But um, when we were in the Radio One scene and Hot, Hot 107.9, yeah. I saw a lot of things that disappointed me, and it made me want to come out of the industry it made me want to get away from it but i also felt i also knew from the age of 12 god called me to do this right and i remember telling my mentor that i didn't want to do it unless it edified god and then we started doing track stars and then it, from there it was just like okay we're not a part of it we're a part of maybe the solution to clean it up but it still feels like when you hear these stories it drags you back into what we saw you know and what how we felt and how dark it was and how it just almost feels hopeless, you know, but for us to continue doing what we do 18 years later, I'm really proud of that. I just mm -hmm. feel at the same time that there's this, like you said, we were raised off of Diddy and, and Big Boy and all that kind of, I mean, mm -hmm. uh, Biggie and all that stuff coming coming out and being a part of hip hop so early. And now it's just like when you see all this and it just it just feels it feels weird and icky. It feels weird. Mm. So weird. Hey. I saw something. I forgot the name of the song, but it was like an old rock and roll song. It was a video, and the girl was probably like 15 to 16. It was a grown man asking the parent because she come out, and the parent was like, "Nah." He went to her window, got her out of her window, and they start flying through the sky on a magic carpet. It was like one of them old rap, rock and roll songs. Start kissing the little girl and everything. Mm. If I find that, I'll show y'all. But it's crazy, bro. Like that was in like the 70s. This song really been out to be honest. But yeah. now since we have so we have social media and we have all this, you know, other outlets, it's just it's just been exposed now. But now I'm starting to see that it's actually been going on like you said earlier. It's been in the music, it's been in the industry, it's been showing it to us, but we were so innocent when the time was happening that we kind of let it go past our heads. But now at this point, like I said, it's just becoming exposed. Everybody's seeing it. I mm. think like I was reading uh Nebuchadnezzar this morning and like you know this whole thing with you know the, the Hebrew boys etc um, and I just was like you know I, I wanted to go back and see I was like what did Nebuchadnezzar mean right and uh, it was interesting because he was saying when you hear the flute and the lair and all this music mm -hmm. bow down right mm -hmm. and so it, it hit me and I was like what does his name mean and it, it means to protect the crown or protect the air 
And when we listen specifically to hip hop, we always mm-hmm. hear this fight to be who's king. Mm-hmm. Right? That's who's true. king. And the worship, right, of fans and bowing down, mm-hmm. right, to their favorite, you know, that favorite person. Mm. And that spirit is is present and wow. lurking. And when you really wow. look at the word, if you really examine the word of God and you see, like, what God does not. There are two things that are constant in the Bible, if you read carefully, mm-hmm. you know, and this, you know, I'm sure people have, you know, run with this, but killing, killing children or hurting children. Mm-hmm. Right. And also I, idol worship. Mm-hmm. These things, we see God unleash wrath unlike no other. Mm-hmm. When you start to see these things, yeah, yeah. And so when you talk about the rituals or these other things that are linked to what's happening with children, and to me, what we don't—I don't think what we recognize about the kingdom is Christ has an operation of government, right? I think sometimes being Christian, calling ourselves Christians, gives us a disservice mm-hmm. because we are actually we're we're citizens of the kingdom right mm-hmm. yeah. and so that functions like a government right the order of god well satan does the opposite right his he also functions in the opposite way in government mm-hmm. right in terms of his structure and so what you always recognize if you recognize with satan working he is going to then turn something that god does and twist it do it in a similar fashion but it's warped right mm-hmm. so it's half truth not the whole truth and honestly when we look at how Satan relates in the Bible, like, I don't know if anybody has recognized this before, but when he says, when Christ says to Peter, he's like, the, the devil wishes to sift you like wheat. Mm-hmm. Do we know that that was actually a sexual connotation? Mm-hmm. So he, he's saying, yeah, I want to get that. I want to get that booty. That's what <laughs> Satan is saying, right? And so Satan has a, there's a lot of twisted homosexual things that attach to Satan and how he operates. Uh, right. And so when you start to break down Greek and Hebrew, you'll find these different connotations to understand like, oh, that's not just <laughs> sifting the wheat is that's what that means. <coughs> like, you know yeah. what I mean? That's see, you see what I'm saying? And now we're, 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 we're cringing. But the enemy wants us that way. Mm, he wants mm. us that way. My weed ain't getting sifted. <laughs> <laughs> we missed that. What you said? I said, I said, my weed ain't finna get sifted. You know what I'm saying? Hey. <laughs> yeah, hey. I love it. Yeah, we good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, anyway, um, like we said, darkness comes to light. Um, that's Yeah. Ain't nothing else to say about this one. Nah. 